Okay, so the next topic is uh, authentication. So right now, everybody could do whatever they wanted with our interface, okay? Of course, uh, uh, we need to insert some kind of uh, login uh, for ensuring that only some users can do some operations and so on. And uh, um, well, there are these two separate concepts. Uh, one is the authentication and the other is the authorization. They go together, but authenticating a user means that uh, the application is checking whether the user is actually who he's pretending to be. Basically, if you know the right password or other kind of authentication. This is something that you, you do at the beginning, login, let's say. The login uh, phase is when you authenticate a user. Then, once a user is authenticated, you can authorize that user to some specifications. Authorization means that for every action, for every route, for every button, for every action on the web page, you decide whether to allow it or not, depending on whether some user is authenticated. So logged in, somebody logged in, or we are in anonymous mode. There are some pages that can be visited by anybody. We don't need any authentication. Some pages are protected. They are only accessible to an authenticated user. And maybe some actions also depend on which users. You have some admin user that can do some actions and no, a regular user that can only do something else. A user can only maybe modify its own posts and, on other, and not other people's posts. Or it can vote other people's posts, posts but cannot vote its own, his own posts. So uh, many actions depend also on who is logged in and in relationship with the data that, be, that is being modified. So authorization is deciding, depending on wh who you are, what you can do. But who you are has been checked at login time. Um, these are complex topics, okay? Everything related to, to security is very complex uh, and uh, uh, it's very easy to, to get wrong. Okay, you forget something and you are opening the security, you're destroying the security of your application so that anybody can enter and so on. Okay, so um, we are, here in this course of course we'll try to do some basic authentication mechanism, but uh, it's not really a, a secure solution. Uh, our, our friends in the cybersecurity course are spending uh, much more time <laughs> on this topic, of course. Uh, but the, the basic message is don't invent anything yourself uh, concerning security. Try to use uh, existing solutions where probably the code or the, path, the programming patterns are already being validated. Uh, and so maybe we don't understand everything, <laughs> but we trust that it's implemented correctly. And in a client server application, authorization is a uh, multi-layer uh, stack of, of checks, of, uh, of permissions, let's say. Okay, so from the user point of view, the user can, have a, can navigate through pages, the routes, that was what we have been doing up, in, up till now. And now we are adding two special functions, one logging and the logout function. And whether the login is successful or not, then the navigation of the pages may change, may affect, be affected, of course, by, by, the, by, by the identity of the person. This is what the user sees. The user knows that they, are, they can navigate the website, then they can log in, and after login, they can do something more. Or they can log out, and they become anonymous again. Okay? from the user point of view. From the application point of view, from the React application, we should implement these functionalities, log in and log out. And we must know whether a user is logged in or not. And if a user is logged in, we must know who it is. And so we must remember some user information. Do I, have a, do I currently have a, a logged in user? Yes, no, who is it? 
which is its name, its email, its permissions, and so on. And normally, since the information about the logged in user is uh, uh, useful in most of the pages of the application, we would store that into a context variable. Okay, so when a user logs in successfully, we set a, a, a context variable to some object that describes the current user. Maybe the name, the avatar, or some other permission. Is an administrator or not? Some basic information about the current user. And when I do log out, of course, I will destroy the state. Set state to empty, that's it. And uh, this state uh, will be distributed through a context variable to every component that needs to check it. So in the navigation bar, I need to show this information. In the form, I need to enable or not some modification action and so on. So everybody would need to check uh, at least whether the user is logged in or not, and maybe also who he is. And this is not automatic. We should implement it ourselves. Um, and this is from the client's, client side point, point of view. But then the authentication, the logged in, uh, the authentication should also be, let's say, um, agreed upon by the server. It's, uh, the server cannot trust the browser, okay, to tell me, oh, this user is logged in. And so I'm making an API call because the user is logged in, because the client could, uh, could not be trusted. If I modify the client, it's JavaScript code on a browser. If I modify this code, I could trick the server into believing that I'm logged in when I'm not really. So there should be some mutual trust between the client and the server that ensures that actually the user has been logged in has been recognized. And who is the only entity that knows whether the, let's say, a user password is correct? It's the server. The problem is that the server is an HTTP server that by definition doesn't have any memory. So if I log in now, I'm providing you my username and my password, and the server checks them with the database and say, okay, this is the correct, these are the correct credentials, one millisecond after, the server doesn't remember that. Okay? But I need to remember it uh, throughout the whole navigation session. React could store this information, but React cannot be trusted by itself. So we need another mechanism for remembering some in client server interaction, something that can be generated and validated by the server, but is uh, survives different API calls. Uh, it's longer term than a normal HTTP uh, memoryless call. And this is where sessions come into play. A session is a concept that is normally used for client server navigation, not without single page application, but with you know, the old style web applications where the server can remember the state of a client interaction. So the server can remember something about you, basically. The issue is that it cannot remember something about you uh, because it doesn't remember at all. It's a stateless. So the server remembers something about you because it gives you some information that you are giving back to it uh, at every next interaction. Okay, so these are uh, the mechanisms based on cookies for ensuring a shared information between the client and the server. Uh, um, the, the cookie is very simple. Imagine that a person that uh, flashes his memory away every two seconds. Okay, so I, I meet you and say, okay, hi, nice to meet you, I'm, I'm John and they immediately forget about your name. Okay, that's my problem. Uh, I'm, I'm a memoryless server. 
but they want to be polite and refer to you, hi, John, after maybe 10 minutes. So how can I know? I could write myself a note saying, this guy is John. But it doesn't work if I have more guys to serve. I'm a server with many clients. So I may have a John, a, a, a Paula, and, uh, and Frank, uh, and uh, other names. I know that I have all these people, but when I have an, a next interaction, a next API call, I don't know which is which. So my trick is uh, not keeping the, you know, the not myself, but giving it to you. Hi, John, nice to meet you. And when I shake your hand, I'm giving you a, a little cookie, a little note. And uh, you promise me not to read, not to modify that note, but to give it back to me every time we meet again. So next time one of you comes, uh, gives me the note, uh, and you open, OK, you're Frank. Oh, hi, Frank. And we go forward. You are giving me some information that I gave you to store. Okay, like people that are trying to save their money to, by putting them into other people's pockets, okay? And uh, of course the browser, so the server is generating the cookie with some information that the server needs to remember you, and this information is stored in the browser. Cookies are the mechanism for transferring this information. A server can set a cookie on the client, and the, the client promises not to modify this cookie and uh, uh, to give it back, give a copy of it every time it will contact with the same server again. It's a very strange way of working, but uh, it's uh, the only way to overcome the, the fact that the server is, is memoryless. Then in practice, I'm not actually giving you the notes with the names, uh, I'm giving you a number from which I can unlock the nodes. So I will have this nodes with number one, two, three, four, five, and give you number five. So I don't give you the list of, of my nodes. I only give you the key, let's say, for, for selecting which is which of mine. And this is the session ID. This is called the session ID. It's an ID that identifies the session from the point of view of the, of the server. Normally, this is a randomly generated and cryptographically secure value so that the client cannot mess with it. It has a number, or a string, that doesn't have any meaning for the client, and if it tries to modify it, it will create an invalid code. And so it cannot be used for forging or for impersonating other people. So we have all the mechanisms to set up if we want the server to remember session data. So the, the, the sessions are made of two separate parts, one exchange of cookies, and these cookies basically exchange a cryptographically secure session ID string, just a meaningless number, and the server using this number will manage a data store that associates with every session ID actual data from the user. And this data on the server can be used to store the authorization. So the server knows that you did log in successfully at a given point in time because the server stored in its own session store information about you. And then it gives to the client a session ID from which the server knows that that session has been authenticated. So it's a complex no, mechanism um, based on, on and we need to no, sessions are a basic mechanism. We never use that, but we need to set it up uh, in order to have uh, you know, all the rest working. And then uh, we have to implement some functionality on the server. So the, the application at this point can know whether a user is logged in or not and then affect the navigation on the client side. But also on the server side, we have a set of APIs and some APIs should be callable by anyone, and some, some APIs should be protected. So we should uh, have a mechanism on the server side that depending on the state of the current session, validated or not, allows or denies the call of some APIs, protects some APIs. These APIs can only be called by a logged in user. These APIs can be called by anybody. 
So we must decide which IPIs are, are protected, and so check the authorization. The authentication is at login. The, the authorization is on every following action. Okay? So we need to understand how to implement this authorization mechanism in Express, and add two special routes that are the route for logging, for, for checking password, and the route for logging out, so for destroying this information. Finally, all this information comes down to checking some user password in the simplest case of authentication where we have a couple, a pair, username and password. And so, usernames and passwords should be stored in the, in the database. In a way that is not accessible to data uh, breach. So we should never store a password in clear in the database. We should all, the password itself should be cryptographically encoded. And so we should learn how to do that uh, encoding and decoding of passwords uh, so for storing them in, a, uh, uh, in an encrypted form. Uh, the password should never be stored in clear anywhere, nor in the client, uh, not in the HTTP uh, calls, in the API calls, not in the server side. Okay? And so again, we should learn this at the database level. So we should learn different technologies at the different levels they should work all together. If any of these fails, either we don't have security or it is broke. Okay? So, and this is one way of doing that. Username and password. We could have other possibilities that, that, that don't use co session cookies. Uh, in some cases, with client application, we have other standards that, that are called the JWT, JavaScript Web Token, which are totally different mechanisms of authentication. Uh, you can have uh, OAuth, uh, open authentication, that you rely on a third party server for authentication. This is just uh, the simplest possibility that involves all these levels. Then there are more complex possibilities, and for every kind of application, we should uh, plan our, our, our strategy. Um, okay, uh, about cookies, I think that uh, I already. Said what we, what is displayed in this, uh, in these lights. Uh, basically, the cookie it has a small piece of information which is set by the server and stored by the client. Um, and basically, what we have in for security purpose, we are creating a cookie for remembering the session ID. So basically, the cookie has a one property. It's called session ID with some random or cryptographically random value. From the point of view of the browser, it's just something that they can store. The browser should store it. This is a already predefined behavior in the browser. We don't need to do anything. Plus, the server can set a, a nice property on a cookie called HTTP only. It means that the cookie will be sent on every HTTP call, as usual. But in addition, it will be protected, it will be invisible to the JavaScript code. Our JavaScript code doesn't need to see that information. We are protecting ourselves from our own mistakes. We don't manage that. We let the browser and the server just sh uh, um, so shake these, uh, these cookies uh, among themselves. We don't need this information to be visible by JavaScript. Okay? So we will create session cookies with a name, a random value, and a HTTP only. With an expiration date, normally we have something like 20 minutes or one hour as the cookie lifetime. Other, after that, it will be considered invalid and should be maybe reissued by the server. Okay? And. Um, Okay, so, uh, no, this is, I think we will save this for later. Okay, so next, uh, what we are going to see is how to implement uh, this mechanism when, with the, this, this display in this picture with one specific library, is the password library in, uh, in JavaScript, uh, on, on Express, basically. Hmm? Uh, so, but before that, because it's, uh, 
It's a compact topic with, with many steps, uh, like we had before. You see that these are these one, two, three, four, five, eight steps uh, uh, to implement. Uh, we need to have a break before. Okay? <coughs>